Hey everyone, welcome back to the How with Halter podcast, where the How stands for helping others win. Each episode, we talk about everything from wealth building to real estate and everything in between to help you win. I'm your humble and gracious host, Michael Piles, and I'm here with my crew, Dennis Earls and Marcy Hatcher, and a special guest. This guest is near and dear to my heart because she's from my hood. She's a brand ambassador, an author, overall trailblazer, current WNBA athlete, entrepreneur, and investor. Please welcome Monique Billings to the podcast. Welcome, Monique. Yeah. What's up, Monique? Hi. Absolutely. Good to see you. You have to. Yeah, oh, she's looking slash. floral, so you got to get the flowers. Yeah, right. it only makes sense. <laughs> for That's sure. Right. And, right. and um, in addition to the flowers, we have something else special for you. Ooh. On behalf of the How With Halter podcast, Ooh. a little something special. You can, you can open that on I camera. Can? Yeah. Okay, okay. Drum, you didn't know, you didn't know drum it was a birthday. Drum roll, please. <laughs> I was ready for this. Drum roll, please. A little something. A little something. <laughs> Come on. Yay. Yay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. It's official. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, thank you. Absolutely. I can't wait to support this. All right, all right, all right. That's right. That's awesome. Yes. yes. Well, I see the budget's going up for our podcast. Right? <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Yeah. We, all kind of, all kind of nice little gifts and everything. Oh. So next, we'll have hair and makeup. Right, right. Well, Mo, it is good to see you again, as always. What you been up to? How are you? Tell us about some of the things you've been working on. We know you got everything going on all at once (laughs) yeah a lot going on um something that i'm actually really really proud of right now is i am an athleta athlete um athleta is a brand and company that's for women by women and so when i was a rookie i wrote down a list of just companies brands i feel like my brand aligns with and athleta was one of them so it's just been such a blessing yeah super dope such a blessing to be represented by them to be able to represent them Mm -hmm. and it's um not like a traditional shoe deal it's not like a a nike or adidas or something like that for me it's a lot more special because we're focused on empowering women that's something that athleta does and so i'm really excited to be an athleta athlete and another thing i just actually signed a deal with hyundai so i'm gonna be working okay i know how much time to hoop i I find the time (laughs) (laughs) the main thing the main thing that's right right. yeah so i'm working on content for hyundai which i'm so excited about as well nice so how do i get a car Ooh, you gotta be a content creator. Don't tell them she's going to go on. That's hilarious. That's it. Well, congrats to you. Thank you. Congrats to you. That's big stuff. Super inspiring. Thank you so much. But you deserve it all. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for joining us during the season. We really appreciate that. We know that's not like a normal thing. So we, yeah. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for such a great platform that you guys have. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's a daily schedule like? What is your daily schedule when you're in season? Yeah. I mean, it depends on where we're at. So Mm. if we're at home this morning, um, I had practice. So we'll watch film, a Mm. lot of film. Mm -hmm. We go on the court, depending on if it's a walkthrough. We have a game tomorrow, so we didn't go as hard. Okay. I'll get shots up with the coach after. I'll do physical therapy after. Mm. Cold Mm. tub, all Mm. that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Go home, take a nap because I need my nap. (laughs) Make sure I eat some good food. And then now I'm getting get in to kick it with you guys look at that is, is it very regimented it's like every day you're boom 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 yes. from sun up to sundown for sure yeah yeah because yeah. you do so many things like obviously you're in season right now when you're in season do you still find time to write and to you know do your businesses and invest in all the things that you do have to yeah. i mean for me personally i am so much more than just a basketball player and so yeah. all those other things just fill me up, fill up my soul. And so if I'm not doing those, I don't think I could be the best version of myself on the court. Mm -hmm. And how long is the season? Season is, I think, six, seven months. It's the summer season. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Wow. You said, you said every, it feeds your soul. Yes. That's awesome. So has it, you know, when you talk about just the plethora of activities that you're in, Mm -hmm. is it something that you've always been interested in? All the different facets that makes Mo Mo? Or is this as you're growing and learning new things, you're trying new things? I have to give credit to uh, my dad just giving me that foundation. Uh, I'm not just being a basketball player. I don't think he wanted me to get burnt out at a young age because I've been playing since I was five. So I've been playing my whole life. And so he wanted me to have other interests and just be versatile in the things that I like to do. And so I've been able to carry that over into my adult life as well. That's awesome. So who are some of your basketball idols? Like your like the top five? Ooh. 
I want to give you two. Can I give you two? <laughs> two, two of my two. favorites. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Um, Akeem Olajuwon. Oh. Yes. The my dream. dad used to play his tapes like okay. religiously. And so okay. I grew up watching him. And so the dream shake, I uh, always try uh, to um, implement that in my game. Okay. And... Dang, I just had another one, but I'm blanking. Oh, Dennis Rodman. What? Yeah, I love Dennis what? Rodman. The word? The word. Yeah, that's Big awesome. one. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about Dennis Rodman yeah, earlier, seriously. too. Yeah. His energy. I love um, watching his energy, his tenacity, yeah. just the way that he got after it. Um, so the Detroit Pistons or the Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman? Chicago Bulls. But I, was, I was gonna throw the Lakers in there. I was about to say, or the Lakers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I would say the Bulls, though. Bulls okay. Rodman sticks out of my head for sure okay mm -hmm. the lakers we, we we always have i say we as if i'm on the team you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, you know? Honorary but, but we have an affinity for getting like players it's, it's we. yeah it's just we. on their way it's out <laughs> okay it so you're we, from right? la so i'm assuming you're a laker fan no no it's funny because i grew up in a household my mom was like a laker hater and so <laughs> i you know grew up admiring my mom i'm like okay i guess i'm gonna be a laker hater too <laughs> right so, uh, yeah but not a clipper fan no, it wasn't okay. Really a clip okay, I had to make sure. Yeah. I had to yeah. make sure. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a team on the NBA side? At this point, no. I support friends. So okay. mm -hmm. whoever my friends are playing for, that's nice. who I support. That's what it's about. That's Love such it. a flex. That's oh my gosh, no. <laughs> it, it was. I caught that too. But it's all good. It's all good. How about on the women's front? I mean, who, who's your top? Your top five? Top two? You know, Being but. a Cali girl, growing up, going to Sparks games, I would see Lisa Leslie, yeah. Candace yeah. Parker. Hey. Yeah, Lisa. so I was a young girl going to the games, watching mm -hmm. them, like, wow, these are super women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, did you ever, I, I wanted to ask you if you ever got to meet the dream or the worm. Ooh, no, I haven't. You haven't got to meet, meet them yet? No. Okay. Hopefully we gotta, we gotta, yeah, we gotta make that happen. Yeah, I heard yeah. He, what he trains like at his house or something. Yeah, like that, I yeah. Think. Mm. Who's that? The dream or the worm? The dream. I don't dream. think I don't think Robin's worm training at his crib. Robin in the club right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what this is. Might be out here in Atlanta. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's I think cool. I think he has a new um, documentary or something that's coming out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing it. I don't uh, have you seen it? No, I haven't even kept up on Netflix or something like that. Okay, Mo. So you have to tell us about this book. Yeah, we got yes, to do this. You got you got to give us all break it down for us. Okay, so finding balance, a playbook for wellness. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we fulfill so many roles within our everyday lives, mm -hmm. and these are my methods and tactics of how to find balance and increase your overall wellness. Mm -hmm. I am so passionate about wellness. I mm -hmm. um, just implement it within my own life, and I found a good balance, not to be cliche, but <laughs> found a good balance of how to implement it. And so I want other people to experience that as well, not just athletes, but mm -hmm. Anyone, I think wellness is for everybody, and yeah. so I want people to be able to tap into it. Hmm. Take me a little bit more down that road. I mean, what does what does wellness consist of for you? I mean, because if I think of wellness, I can think of it, you know, many different facets, right, for different yeah. folks, right. So how about you know what is that for you specifically? I would say it's different depending on the day. I think there's so many different things that I can do that include wellness. Mm -hmm. There's the things like getting massage, getting my nails done, hair done, all that. All that is self-care. Self -care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm the self-care queen, and I think that's necessary. But wellness is also, like we said earlier, feeding your soul. Right. Yeah. It's taking the time to be still, to um, evaluate and ask yourself tough questions. Like, how am I really doing today? Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on within my spirit? It's mm -hmm. not just about the outer, but the inner as I well. I love it. So is this for men and women? Or is this totally. Just for, okay. I mean, wellness is for everybody. I, I so agree. I agree. It's definitely. It's a pink cover, but that's what I was. Like, okay, I want to make sure I get to read well. it as well. And okay. I got the tea there too because uh. you know when you are reading, you want to be in um, just a good headspace. I think mm. tea is something that kind of brings balance and um, like a little pleasure for you. So yeah, I have the tea there as well. Mm -hmm. It's a major talking point because, you know, in the black community, even with the males, right, men don't speak about their mental right. health or they're right. good yeah. or they're bad. You know, I struggle with it. Like, yeah. wow, how do I juggle so many different things throughout my day? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The school, the the kids, the wife, the finances, yeah. the whole tear. It's like yeah. it's right. so much. When do I take a step back and just say, yeah. Yeah. breathe. Yeah. Right. And how do I do it? So I'm learning myself how to really find within my find within the wellness or the what's this 
the, the, the Zen, the cheese. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. The Wusa. I want to add to what you said. Like, it's a never ending process. So, mm -hmm. where you're at right now, like mm -hmm. in 10 years, you might be in a completely different space and finding balance and your wellness might be, look different. And, like, that's totally okay. And I think that's something that I'm realizing. Like, when I wrote this book a few years ago, maybe two, three years ago, I was in a completely different space. And I'm mm. like, ooh, I have a good hold on this. Now I'm in a different season of my life where like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say I'm struggling, but there's some storms. And so yeah. it's like this book, I can come back to it. I wrote the book and I'm able to come back to it. Like, yeah. wow, I need it more than ever right now. So I really think that wellness will just continue to evolve as we evolve as humans. I love it. I love that. Do you find yourself helping your your teammates or even <laughs> your coaches? I mean, because you're, I think you're helping us right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think we're a little older than you, but we're, we're, you're helping, at least you're helping me. I'll speak for oh, myself here. You. No, she's helping um, all of us. And, and I definitely <laughs> need to read this book. But yeah, do you find yourself helping your teammates or coaches or anybody else that you interact with as it relates to their wellness? and and how they spend their time i mean i try to be a vessel as much as i can i mean mm -hmm. i'm a god-fearing woman and so i know that yeah. god put oh, me on god. this earth and god put me in the WNBA to do more than just shoot a basketball and so Amen. me having that understanding i know that there's just a bigger picture to all of it so i definitely try to be positive and add to any environment that i'm in not just with my teammates but yeah anywhere that i go i want to be a light so definitely trying to Love it. that's, so that's cool. powerful yeah, right, yeah, it's, it's that it. thing of what's it? Just shut up and dribble. Yeah, right. Yeah. Was, right, like, yeah. right. Like you're, you're showing we're so much more than just an athlete. Yeah. Right, yeah. we can do so many different things. Like I, I commend you. Thank yeah, you. for sure. I commend you. I, commend you. I, I have one more question about that. I mean, yeah. were you always like in that, following that same journey, or was there something impactful in your life that took you? to this, this place? Great question. Yeah, that is a really good question. Again, I got a shout out to my mom and my dad just giving mm -hmm. me such shout a great foundation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, my dad always used to say, your mind, your body, your spirit, they need to be in alignment. That's and when it. I was young, I never understood what that meant. I'd just mm -hmm. be like, okay, dad, just brush it off. <laughs> and as I've gotten older and just being in this um, career field and just all the things, the places that I travel to, the people who I'm around, like I understand that my mind, my body, my spirit, like those are things that I need to make sure are are at a high level and yeah. I try to be the best version of myself every mm -hmm. single day. Mm -hmm. So I would say it kind of has always been with me just because of how I was brought up. But mm -hmm. like I talked about like evolution, like I continue to see and just kind of unravel different layers of myself mm -hmm. through writing this, through living and just, yeah, it just it. keeps going. I was wondering because as we talk about finding the balance, we're talking about the aspects and variables that contribute to that balance. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the things you look to avoid when you're looking for your balance? Mm. I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that. There you go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right. no, that's a good I mean, for me, I'm always listening to just the inner voice within. Mm -hmm. So if I have a feeling that comes up like, oh, I don't like this. Like, what is this? Right. Whatever that might be. I think that's that's like a red flag. You want right. to listen to those red flags. Yeah. And yeah. on the other side of that, you want to listen to when you, your spirit feels good and when you feel like you're in yeah. a good place. Like, oh, I want more of this in my life. Like, what is this? This feeling. So uh, I think it's just being in tune with yourself and taking yeah. that time to be in tune. That makes sense. It seems like you have like a, a, a strong support system too, like a strong village, right? So you've much. been, yeah, you've been talking about your family and yeah. do they help kind of repel some of the distractions and the noise around you? Cause I know it comes at, you know, especially professional athletes all the time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah I would say, uh, my family, like I had mentioned, and then I got to give a shout out to my manager, Chris. All right. Brown. All right. Mm -hmm. um, shout out. Yeah. Shout out. That's my guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Chris and just my agents and the people who, um, I have built around me, the team that I built around me, yeah. they've become like family, yeah. mm -hmm. which is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they definitely help to repel the negative energy. Like I said, when I'm going through storms, they remind me of who I am. They remind me of my purpose yeah. to stay on purpose. And uh, yeah, they help me get through everything that I go through. Wow. How much pressure is on you as a professional athlete? Oof, a lot. A whole lot of pressure. Right. It's all about finding ways to manage that. It's hard, though. I have to be honest. It's, mm -hmm. it's extremely tough. Hmm. And is that just from on court or is it on court and off court? I would say it's mostly on court because like you want to perform, you yeah. know, you want to do the job that you have been, that you're being paid to do. Like you want to be great. Yeah. You know, like we put so much work in and you, they say like the work that's in the dark will always come to the light. And sometimes mm. like you just have to wait for that season to come. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there is a lot of pressure, but you have to remind yourself that like it's a process mm -hmm. as cliche as it yeah. might be. Like yeah. you have to trust the process. Yeah. I love it. 
tell the audience, how do we find a book? How do we, how do we buy it? Yes. My book is on my website, okay. mobillings.com, okay. M-O-B-I-L-L-I-N-G-S.com. And I have not the audio book. The audio book is on the way. So stay okay. tuned because the audio book right. is on the way. Is it going to be your voice? Yes. Oh, I love it. I love, love it. I have the ebook on Amazon. So for my digital readers, that is on Amazon. That's yeah. right. So That's right. what are your passions off the court? Ooh, I have so many. Okay. Well, I'm a content creator, so I love mm-hmm. creating content. That's mm-hmm. something that I'm extremely passionate about. Mm-hmm. And I like being outdoors. Okay. I really enjoy spending time swimming, hiking, mm-hmm. biking, like mm-hmm. just being in nature. Love it. Love it. So I, I share some of those same some of those same things. So okay. so it sounds like what you like to disconnect from, yes, from hoop? Yes, exactly. Disconnect in order to reconnect. Really? Uh, okay. okay. That's a t-shirt. I know, right? <laughs> oh, you got it. That's all you Chris, you got that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so what? I mean, is it is it the six to eight months on and then literally the rest of the year you're, you're disconnecting at that point? or It's interesting because a lot of people don't know WNBA players, most of us will go play overseas. Okay. Mm. So I've played in 10 countries in the last countries. five years. Okay. Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, tell, tell a little bit about that 10 and five years 10 and wow. five years yeah. i have moved around yeah, yeah yeah um there's so many different types of seasons uh-huh. so there's like tournaments that are three weeks there's eight month seasons okay. um, and everything in between yeah. so i have lived in china south korea lebanon mm. russia just to name a few oh okay. yeah. russia yeah That's it was a- amazing though i had a really great experience there nice. Ooh. yeah okay nice. my favorite part about going overseas and traveling is like the people that i meet yeah. i have met some amazing people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's get real. Okay. Tell us something crazy. Like tell us like the craziest thing during your <laughs> overseas career. Like tell us about a, you know, just a, a interesting experience. I've had quite a few, <laughs> but okay. Um a few months ago I was playing in Istanbul. Okay. My favorite city in the world. I love Istanbul, mm. Turkey. Turkey. I'm yeah. on a flight to Budapest. I had like the weekend off. I've never been to Budapest, so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go for the weekend. I meet this guy on the plane and he recognized me. He knew I was a basketball player. So we had small talk, whatever. After the flight, he invited me over to his house for dinner with his his family, his Whoa. wife, his kids. Oh. And I'm looking at him like, what? Like, what do you mean? You right. have a wife and kids? Like, <laughs> you know, you gotta chop me up. What's going on? Here? <laughs> so right. those are the thoughts that are going in my head. But I don't know, just that inner voice like I talked Absolutely. about. Yeah. Was like, eh, the gut. Follow the it gut. It might be okay. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. I end up going. Wonderful family. Wow. Um, his wife was super nice. His kids were amazing. And he was like a chef. So he mm. like cooked this really nice meal. And it's like, I'm in Budapest. Just met mm. these random people. Mm-hmm. And like, here I am. But like, that's what life is about. It's about yeah. connecting with people, touching people from other cultures. And just, again, being light. Yeah. Just sharing those experiences. And living in the moment is living what it sounds moment. like as yeah. well. So. Totally. That could have been a TMZ story. I know. I could have. <laughs> but it worked out for the good. It worked out. It's still a TMZ story. <laughs> yeah. You have a good. You have a great inner voice. It's calibrated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I try. <laughs> what, what's the best thing you've eaten overseas? Mm. Again, I'll go back to Turkey. Living okay. in Turkey. This is one of the reasons it's okay. your favorite yes. your favorite oh, place. Because I am a foodie in yeah. the food out there. Mm. First of all, it's real food. Yes. Okay. So when you eat it, the fruits and veggies, like they expire within days. That's how mm, you know right, it's real. Right. But yeah, it's just really fresh. The orange juice, like the tomatoes, the carrots, like it's just all so, so good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So we've heard a lot about, I mean, the places you love. I mean, what's home for you? Where's home, what's home base for you? If I could be honest, home is where I'm at just mm. because home I travel so much. Yeah. Every six months, I'm in a new home. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. Atlanta is home while I'm here. Okay. Yeah. I've been playing here for six seasons, so that's been great. But I adjust pretty well. So, yeah, wherever I'm at, that becomes home. Love it. That's Love awesome. It. So I was going to ask you, you know, we've talked about your book and uh, your passions. You know, one thing that we really focus on with Halter Group is real estate and yes. real estate investing. And we know that you're big into that space as well. Talk a little bit about your uh, real estate investing journey and um, how you've come to become a real estate investor. Yeah. So I bought my first property about a year and a half ago. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. Um, super, super exciting. At 25, buying my own yeah. home. Just very gratifying feeling. And I'm in the process of buying a second home in Miami. Okay. And so, yeah, I'm learning, like I said, from my manager and from yeah. my team, from people like you, yes. you guys. Yes. Um, yeah, just learning more about that. Okay. And so in the next five years, where is this? Are you, are you looking to establish a real estate empire or? I mean, God willing. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. I mean, I'd love to buy property abroad. Yes. I went to Greece for the first time last year. 
And when I go to these different countries and when I travel, I'm like, ooh, I kind of want to be here. Like, I could mm-hmm. see myself buying mm-hmm. property here. And that's yeah. where my mind goes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's definitely in the, within my goals in the next five years. That's awesome. Yeah. Especially to be so young and doing all that. It's really yeah. impressive. Thank you. Yeah. It really is. I mean, I think, you know, buying your first property and now your second one, now it's about educating yeah. and how to go and, and, and buy asset producing properties i mean cash flow producing properties right that can start to offset that WNBA contract Mm -hmm. right so when you're done playing and you hang them up now it's like oh okay so you know i got this coming in from here and that coming in from there and you're doing extremely well so i'm trying to learn from y'all y'all gotta put me on just you know well that's we're gonna do that oh for sure sure. sure. i don't have it all figured out Uh, no 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 we're definitely going to do that that's for sure are are your teammates are are they utilizing you as like a catalyst to to also learn about property investing buying their first homes and things like that (laughs) it's interesting we don't talk about it as much as like you would think Yeah. yeah Um, I don't want to say it's like a taboo or anything like mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't know. We just don't talk about it. As I much. think it is. Yet, I right? think yeah. it is because, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, I know this information and I'm not going to share it because if I share yeah. it, yeah. then maybe I'll have less of this. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Well, really, it's all about, well, if we all know this information yeah. and if we all can put in money together, yeah. mm. we can have, well, you can have this, but we can have this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. and this is so much more for us to share and build upon. Yeah. If we bring in that player and that player and that manager and that agent, now look at where we are. Yeah, yeah. That's well, the syndication. I think it's really interesting too. You know, when we look at professional athletes, and we could see, like, I look at your IG all the time. Where you know we're plugged in, mm-hmm. and you know you live this gra- glamorous life. You forget that you're human, just like mm-hmm. anyone else. Like you talk about the ups and downs, and the high seasons and the low mm-hmm. seasons, and the same thing. You know that human element. It extends to the conversations you have at the workplace too, because yeah, exactly. if you really think about it, like in the in the corporate world or you know the the real, the working world, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. you're not necessarily talking to all your nope. coworkers about your investments right. and what you're yeah. doing and stuff right. like that. And so we have more visibility to what professional athletes are making, and you know it's a little more bit more transparency mm-hmm. there. But it sounds like what you're saying it works just like. A corporate office, you know, you guys, you go to work, you know, you have your relationships, but it's not like, oh, what are you investing in and what yeah. are you doing? It's not like that. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, even in thinking about, I mean, just going with the wellness concept, right? Thinking about your financial wellness, is that something that you think should be talked about? Mm. Me personally, I don't know. I think I'm more comfortable talking about it with like my team outside of my basketball team, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the people that, like my agents, my managers, like those types of people, I think I'm more comfortable talking about it with them. Okay. Yeah. Separation of church and state. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, the thing is like, and you know, you're a content creator and a lot of your content is just inspirational. You know, you talk a lot about um, what you're doing in your endeavors, your business endeavors. And I think that impresses, especially on young women mm-hmm. and our community, right? And so- I know you're doing it in your individual way, but I think, you know, there's probably a greater opportunity to have more of a corporate message Mm -hmm. in, you know, in athletics. Um, We see it. We see individuals, Mm -hmm. you know, you look at LeBron James and, you know, various individuals that are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. But as a collective, I feel like, you know, there's there's a way that we can band together and kind of, you know, galvanize that. I don't know. As a as a community. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I think that could be awesome. And as you were saying that, something that came into my head is pouring into like the younger community. So Mm -hmm. young girls or just young athletes that are in college. Like I wish I had this information when I was in college. I didn't have it. Right. I think now being a pro and my colleagues, I think we kind of are just figuring it out on our own. And like we'll have little conversations here and there. But I think like younger people and college athletes, they don't really know too much about any of this. And so... I think they're more willing to learn, if that makes sense. Yeah, That's something where like high school, for example, mm-hmm. right? You have your core classes, your whatever. If they was to eliminate, I don't know, PE right. and inserted a tax class, right? Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or eliminated chemistry for those non-science majors, right? right, right. Those science, whatever. <laughs> and inserted real estate. Yep. Mm-hmm. That knowledge will start so much earlier in people's lives yeah, sure. that it will follow them into college and then from college into their professional careers, whatever sure. it might be. And now that knowledge is so much more 
powerful than what yeah. it is now. Because yeah. look, look, so many black and brown just don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. They don't know yeah. what to do. That's right, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And they're scared to open their mouth to say, "Look, you know, Marcy, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> right. what do I know, right. right? Or what do I do? Right. And or the trust factor, right? Yeah. Part, right? Yeah. Do I trust my agent? Do I trust whomever it might be mm-hmm. right. to guide me in the right direction, right? Our partner Ennis is the financial advisor. So we have these calls all the time about how do you properly represent an athlete and not put yourself first. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. right. Because yeah. the client should come first. And of course, the client makes money, you're going to make money. Yeah. But how do you do that? There's so many different trust issues in the black community. That's right. And that's I think true. that's an issue that's, that's got to be fixed. I think we're I think we're starting to address it on the How With Halter podcast, right? Yeah, I do too. That's, I mean, I uh, honestly, at the end of the day, that's why we're here. To educate, you know, a lot of the um, message that we're trying to disseminate isn't out there. Yep. You know, it's not widespread. It's not ubiquitous. And we want to make it so. Yeah. And so we're using our platform in the best way we can to empower and, and educate. Look at all these corporations. Mm-hmm. Professional franchises. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're a pro athlete here, right? Yep. Look yep. at all these pro franchises. Those typically are owned by either... One person, two, three, four, five, right? Mm-hmm. That's a syndication. Right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So they pulled their money together. Yep. They bought this franchise and whatever sports it is. Yep. And now they're making all the money. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. The NBA, so WNBA syndication. Yeah. Just take yeah. that and apply it to real estate or take that and apply it to being an author. Mm-hmm. Take that and apply it to whatever you're in. Yeah. And watch the money just continue to go up. Well. That's right. Now, yeah. now, from an investing standpoint, are you only interested in real estate or do you have a a pretty broad portfolio. Yeah, I would say my portfolio is uh, versatile. Tech, real estate, different companies. Like I said, I'm a content creator, so different mm-hmm. companies that I'm working with, I've been able to invest in as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it's been uh, versatile. Yeah, nice, mm-hmm. nice, nice. Okay, and what have you found to be probably, I don't want to get into your business, so we don't have to talk about the most profitable, <laughs> but, but more so like the most, most like, stop, impactful stop. for you, right? That, that, <laughs> Just keeps you engaged. I would say the crib, buying my first crib, yeah. like yeah. buying my okay. house. Just something that I imagined, yeah. but when I was young, but like, you know, it's like, is this really gonna happen? When is it gonna right, happen? And then when right. it happens, it's like, ooh, I get to decorate it. <laughs> but yes. on the flip side, there's a lot of things that come with being a homeowner that people mm, don't talk about. Yes. So, you like know, what? Like a tree falling in my backyard <laughs> last week and busting through the gate Dang. and gotta figure it out. But figure it's it like, out. yeah, it's crib. exactly. <laughs> Calling home insurance and I'm like, dang, put me back in an apartment, right, <laughs> like, right, you right, know. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I would say my house has been the most okay. fulfilling and gratifying investment so far. What was the hardest thing about buying your house? Oh, other than um, other than cutting a check. <laughs> that part. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was not there for the closing. I was uh, in California. Okay. I bought the house in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So they had to send like a notary and I had to go through that process and my mom was there. So that was cool. But it was just very untraditional. You know, yeah. you want to be at the house. You want to get those keys in your hand. Mm-hmm. And I think you I was need that shopping. content. I know. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But um, I think I was starting training camp in a few weeks, but I wanted to be in Cali. So. Yeah, it just was, uh, like I said, an untraditional process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you got to make it work. You're so busy. You have so much, and, and you're doing it. You made it work. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you got moms to hold it down, too, yeah, for which sure. is a blessing. For sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, having that strong foundation goes a long way. So, I mean, you, you've talked a lot about family, and, and we definitely love that here. That's Thank something you. that we see. A lot of our most successful investors, they come from those strong foundations. Mm. So we've heard a lot about, you know, what you have going on. You have a very impressive story. Thank you. Very impressive story. So congratulations for, to you um, for everything that you have achieved. I am interested. I want to know, I mean, how do you plan to elevate that? Like, what, what's next for you? It's a really great question. I think that's something that I'm trying to figure out mm-hmm. and praying about. Mm-hmm. Um we talked about buying more property, adding that to, to the portfolio, um, gaining knowledge, helping others as well. I think this conversation actually inspired me a little bit. I'm like, why haven't I had those conversations with my teammates and how can I be a light to the youth and help them and understand investing, real estate, all those different things that mm. I have my hands in. Mm. So I think those are some things that have come upon my spirit. I love it. So when typically when we when we ask that question, we'll get something like, yo, we're going to go from buying one property to 10 properties. <laughs> I love the fact that you took it back to paying it forward. Yeah. You literally yeah. came back and said, look, I want to pay it forward. Talk to my teammates. Yep. Talk to the youth. That's special. Thank That's special. You. That says a lot about you. I so where can the audience find you on, on social media? Um, all my platforms are Monique Billings. Okay. And yeah. 
Yes, and then Amazon for the book. Amazon for the ebook. For the ebook. For the hard copy. If you want a signed copy, it's on my website, mobillings.com. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Um, you said it perfectly with talking about being a light to others. You were certainly a light to us today. We hope that all of you enjoyed this episode of the How with Halter podcast. Make sure to follow us on YouTube as well as Instagram, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us, Mo. Thanks for having yes. me. All right. Yes.